Mr. General Bagel, let me be your slave When paper blows the trumpet, then I'll rise from my grave It's only a sweet jelly roll She loved the jelly roll But it's rather daddy Deep down Great to see you, Roger, and excited about the show tomorrow. 19 years you've been doing Is that right? Is that a yeah. misprint? I can't no. believe that. No, that's, that's the truth. Amazing. It is amazing. That's a truly extraordinary thing you've got going there. My favorite thing about your show, too, is it's free, except it costs $12 to park your car. It's $200 now. It's gone up. <laughs> $200. What a racket you got going over there. That's unbelievable. So uh, why don't you guys play a tune, and then we'll talk a little bit more about the free show tomorrow at the Pines. Okay. Smokes Roger, that was unbelievable. That ending was incredible. Yes, <laughs> never done that that way before. <laughs> yeah, I thought I was going to keep going. You surprised me. Well, so did Hal. <laughs> <laughs> That's a nice song, though. Thank you. I just carried away on that. I don't even know what it meant, but most yeah. songs I don't know what they mean. So. Yeah, well, that one. Roger, is, he's a character. He's a part of the community. He's a great musician. And I think that's a big part of his music, actually, is the fact that he's a real person. And that comes across in um, his vocals and also his writing, where, you know, one of his big songs was uh, Get Out of Worcester. He's from originally from Worcester. And that just connected with people, not just because Worcester was kind of a down and out place, but just that it was local, it was a real place. Nobody sings about Worcester, you know. It just never even occur to people to sing about Worcester, except to Roger. And that's Roger. He's unique, he's funky, he's down to earth. Have you ever seen streets so bumpy? I'm just a young man and I feel so funny, Lord. I gotta get out of here. It's the same old corners and the same old stores. Same old buildings and they're building more. Almost all my songs, for whatever reason, are about things that really happened to me. So I wrote a song. My dad had a friend named Phil Thompson who was a wallpaper hanger. My dad said, listen, you've got to learn how to make a living. You have to have a backup. So I started, I learned from Phil and my brother how to hang wallpaper. So I started, you know, like a tradesman. I learned from family members and I became a wallpaper hanger. All right.
I was in Nashville, Tennessee as a songwriter, and I needed to stay in town. I couldn't afford to leave because you have to be there for the people to uh, hear your songs. So I got a job hanging wallpaper. So I'm hanging wallpaper, and I'm my song. My head's filled with songs. And I wrote, took out a piece of paper, and I wrote on the back some lyrics. And then at the end of the day, I was tired and sweaty, and I went looking for that that uh, that song, and I realized I had hung it up on somebody's wall. Biggest problem, not the product, not not the artist, but the difficulties in today's marketplace for people just to open up an envelope and give the music a chance to be heard. Pulling out all the stops. Uh, we're shipping demos to every label we possibly can. Uh, we have a meeting with ASCAP on uh, Tuesday. Um, we're really trying hard to get uh, that music, which we all think is so great, heard by the masses. Um, Apathy and indifference be damned. I think, uh, and I truly believe there's something special that Roger has to offer. And uh, we're going to keep on plugging until uh, somebody out there sees it on a mass level. Oh, part time. Part time can be so hard. Roger played uh, with a lot of the good bands in San Francisco in 68, and especially played a lot with Santana in those days. And Santana was not a nationally known act at that time, but they were very well known in San Francisco and had a huge following. And that was when Bill Graham had opened the Carousel Ballroom down on Market Street in San Francisco, so that's where most of the shows took place. He started out at the Fillmore Auditorium, but moved down to the Carousel when it was bigger. And so it was great just to be on the same stage as those people hanging out in the back room with musicians. The music that Roger played at that time was his style. There was really nobody else playing his style. It's something that he brought with him. But, you know, I knew him when he was just a single folk musician. So when he came out in 68, it was really the first time that I had heard him with a full band backup as well as... Uh, as the, uh, the female singer Robin as well with the band. So it was an interesting mix of, of the music of the times, but it still had a, you know, a folk tradition was the basis for it. Rogers has had many reviews of his CDs and things that he's done. The Boston Phoenix has been quoted numerous times. Rolling Stone called Rogers Saloon a superb storyteller. Car and Driver called Rogers Saloon a triumph. Mr. Rogers Saloon and the Stranglers!
Thank you.